Uh, this is Christy. She's one of the um, uh, dietitians that works with Fresh Start Bariatrics, and I've asked her to talk to you a little bit about the things that she thinks is important uh, as patients come into our program, and she has the opportunity to have a first consultation with them. So why don't you uh, let us know what you think, Christy? I think some of the, the main focus I'd like to um, point out is the importance of it, obviously the lifestyle changes in regards to diet and also exercise. Um, I tend to focus a little bit on um, lowering your fat intake, increasing your fiber intake, and obviously lowering your sugar intake also. And one of the resources we like to use is actually the Nutrition Facts label because it's a great reference or a great resource for people as long as you understand how to read it. So, so why don't you show them how how you teach people how to read it. Well, with the bariatric surgery, we often like to look at the fat content and the sugar content. And so you can see that it's, you can find this right on the Nutrition's Facts label. So what we'll give you is some reference guides as far as the total fat. We often recommend that there's less than five grams of fat per serving along with sugar. Uh, we also look for a good um, uh, target as far as sugar is less than five grams per per serving also. But in addition we focus on the fiber because we want to increase your fiber. It's a great component of food that fills you up but we don't necessarily absorb it. Um, so we tend to focus it also. How much fiber do you, re do you expect people to be able to get in in a day? Typically we try to encourage about 20 to 25 grams for women, 30 to 35 grams for men, but then we want to incorporate. If you're not used to eating a lot of fiber in your diet, we want to incorporate it slowly. Um, and we also emphasize if you're going to gradually introduce fiber that we also ensure that you're drinking plenty of fluids also. All right. And are there other things from uh, the labels on different foods that you ask people to learn to read? Well, um, we eventually uh, graduate into looking at also the protein content of food since protein is so important. Um, especially post-op, we are always concerned that you're getting adequate protein. We'll look at sodium also because some people retain fluid, so we want to focus on that also. Um, what are your recommendations about total protein for patients after they have bariatric surgery? Uh, Post-op, we often look for about 60 grams uh, for women and 75 grams for men. However, that's individualized based on the, the person and so forth, but that's usually our target goal. And, and what are your targets in regard to sugar for people? You said about five grams. Uh, did, was that per meal or per serving? Well, that's or kind of a think? servings guideline when you're trying to determine if you're going to purchase something at the grocery store. It's kind of to determine if it should be dropped in that grocery cart. But on, as a meal, I would say less than 10 grams per serving per meal of sugar. Okay. Um, are there other things on the labels that you uh, help people to look into? Do you look into the amount of vitamins or anything like that? people have or is that more uh, left to the replacement? Yeah, we don't really, I mean it's great if foods are fortified um, with vitamins and minerals. Some of your supplements like your carnation instant breakfast, no sugar added, is fortified in cereals. But we don't focus as much on the vitamin and mineral content of the particular items. We, I'd really encourage it just people to eat a well-balanced, well-colorful, lots of fruits and vegetables. And if you're eating a well-balanced diet, I think we can pretty much um, use that supplemental um, vitamin and mineral post that. Good. Are there other things that you like to tell people when they first come in to you for their first consultation? Uh, are there other thoughts that you give them or techniques that you give them for replacement, anything like that? Well, I think some of the focuses I like to ease your mind upon coming in. I think sometimes people think that dietitians are here to judge. And honestly, we do everything on an individual basis. We try to keep things very um, positive um, and point out the things that you are doing um, right, right off the bat. Um, sometimes I think it can be intimidating. So we just want to let you know that we're your biggest cheerleaders, that we're on your side, and that we'll take you as an individual and work with you and your special needs. So it sounds like you customize it based on uh, different factors. Uh, what are those factors that, that help you to customize things one way or another way? Well, I think we we just look at... Um we look, we do a recall, so we kind of look at how their current their current eating pattern is. Um, are they skipping meals? Um, do they do a lot of dining out? Um, factors like that, and based on that, we'll try to tailor. Maybe someone eats a lot of vitamin or a lot of uh, fruits and vegetables, um, where someone may not. Also, we might focus that particular session on vitamin or on fruits and vegetables. 
of where someone else might be doing a lot of dining out and maybe they need help with um, brown bagging, healthy brown bagging. So I think we kind of just take a picture of what they're currently doing and then we find those areas which we feel we need to um, strengthen with their input. I always like to include their input uh, as far as what area did they feel they need um, to work on and then we kind of prioritize and work advances at each session. And do you have any comments about portion sizes? Uh, absolutely. Um, that's one thing that we'll look at when we do um, a diet history. We're looking at the food records. We'll, we'll take a look at the, um, the food portions and we educate on that um, regarding what is appropriate because our industry, we've kind of gotten a portion distortion. And so I think sometimes um, we forget that um, we might need to, to educate a little bit on what is considered um, appropriate portion size. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you brought with us, with you, that uh, you'd like to tell people about? Not really. <laughs> Not really. Okay. <laughs> All right. And um, what do you what do you tell people about like cheeses and things like that? Uh, what what can that's you a, tell that's us a about good that? point. There's I think there's a lot of education, and that's where the food label comes in again. I think people don't understand the composition of food sometimes, and cheeses, although they're very, um, it's a dairy, and it's known as a good food sometimes. The fat content is relatively high. Same with peanut butter, it's high fiber, it's high protein. Um, I think within um, minimal moderate use, it, it, it's okay, but I think sometimes we, we think of it as such a good food because of the protein that we could consume hidden fat or not, un, you know, fats that we didn't realize we were actually taking in. Okay, so you work on the composition of foods and help people to understand what it is that they're really eating as well. Yeah, because I think it's not always volume. It's not always how much am I eating. And portions is important, absolutely. But I think it's also the composition of the food. Um, I think sometimes people aren't eating very much, but mm -hmm. it's the fact that it's a very high calorie, um, high fat type item. And so mm -hmm. that's, again, I, I tend to reference the food label because I think that's a great way to learn the composition of food. Mm -hmm. um, but also on the nutrition facts level, you've got to look at the serving size because that can be misleading. Manufacturers will alter the serving size, and so we also teach that as always to look at the serving size and ensure that that's what they're eating. Um, what they're eating the appropriate serving size is not correct. necessarily what's listed on the box. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, and um, uh, just the, one last question. Uh, when... Um, uh, someone is going to be leaving you after that first session. Uh, what kind of notes of encouragement do you have for people of size that are struggling, have struggled over the years with lots of different diets, and now they've come to you and Fresh Start Bariatrics, and they're uh, they're really looking for some guidance and maybe even some encouragement about what what they're going to be doing over the next several months. All right. Well, first of all, um, as far as encouragement, we always take them back to where were they when they first started. Um, and we just show them, even though they may still have some other um, hurdles or barriers to overcome, we show them how, you know, how positive it is that where they are now compared to where they started. But also, um, we have support groups um, that are available that we're always there for them. We're a great resource for them. We always leave um, emails open to them, phone numbers open to them. So even though we may not see them on a regular basis, um, we're always have a com great communication with them. Even um, later, even after they're finished through the program. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, again, we we're their biggest support when when they succeed. We feel we succeed, and so um, again, the support groups are there with various topics. So we encourage them to always um, consider coming to them um, years after surgery. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thanks so much, Christy, for spending your time with us. Thank we you. really appreciate it. I know the patients appreciate it as well. Thank you.